Hey guys, recent reports have indicated that the Toronto real estate market is going to see a decline once government subsidies and mortgage deferral programs come to an end. So I'm going to share with you my thoughts on this coming right up. What's up YouTube? Welcome back to your weekly Toronto real estate market update. If this is your first time checking out my channel, we're here every Monday chatting about how the Toronto market is doing and also to review any other factors that might have an impact on the market. So if this is your first time here, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell so that YouTube can let you know whenever a new video comes out. And before we get into the update, I first wanted to start off by saying Happy Father's Day. I had a fantastic day with my son yesterday and I hope all the dads out there also had a great day. All right, so now without any further delay, let's talk about what one of the biggest factors that has been likely impacting the real estate market from behind the scenes. Last week, the federal government announced an extension to the Canada Emergency Response Benefit eligibility period by eight weeks. So that's an additional two months that Canadians can receive a benefit of $2,000 if they qualify. And that's a lot of money that can be used to support families and their household expenses, including mortgage payments. So now this program should come to an end in September rather than July. But on top of this, mortgage deferral should also be coming to an end for a lot of homeowners who took advantage of this program back in March when it first kicked off. So with both mortgage deferral and CERB finishing around the same time at the end of September, we might see an interesting turn of events in the fall real estate market. In fact, we've already seen the number of home listings go up and it continues to rise every single week. New home listings are up another 7% compared to the previous week with 617 new listings. And this is a new record for new listings in a single week this year so far. Back in March was the peak for new home listings before the economic downturn, and we have now exceeded that after 15 weeks. But an increase in new listings also means more chances that a high percentage will be taken off the market and canceled, which is true as you can see here with 178 listings canceled last week. But this doesn't alarm me because it works out to be just one listing canceled for every three put on the market. So home inventory is still very good. And compare that to April when one listing was canceled for every one that was listed. With condos, we're seeing a similar trend with 917 new condos listed last week in Toronto, which is the most we've seen in a single week all year. And just like other new home listings, there was a three to one ratio with 291 condo listings taken off the market last week. So with that information, what I want you to do is erase any doubt you have in your mind that sellers are afraid to get into the market now. Because if there's one thing that's for certain is that sellers have bounced back into the market. And I can think of two reasons why that is. The first reason is because of what we've already talked about with mortgage deferrals and CERB coming to an end in three months. Homeowners who have been planning ahead know that they need to act now if they want to avoid the possibility of defaulting on their mortgage payments, which can lead to foreclosure. Because getting a home ready for sale obviously takes time. And on top of that, it takes time to find a buyer and close a deal, which can typically take about 30 to 60 days. And the second reason why sellers are very active now is because buyers are flooding the market. And someone who is looking to sell their home and is very quick to act can capitalize on this and get them the most money in their pockets for their home. Because despite the number of new listings, sellers are aware that buyers are competing in multiple offers and bidding wars. And this tends to drive up the prices of real estate. But in all honesty, there's no reason why this should be happening right now. Because new listings are exceeding sales sales, giving more options to potential buyers. There's essentially one home that's sold for every three listed on the market, which we'll talk about more in just a minute. But until this balance is out, we'll continue to see home prices go up as we've been seeing for the past 10 weeks. Another new record was set with the highest average sold price set last week at $1.45 million. And even though this is still lower than the highest average we saw this year at $1.57 million, you can see prices are trending up. And these high prices are driven by the demand of Toronto real estate, which explains why sellers are willing to get back into the market. Because they understand that if buyer demand is there, it makes now the best time to sell your home. In fact, the increase in buyer demand has led to more home sales. And before we get into home sales, give this video a thumbs up if you're gaining value from this video. The most recent data shows that 219 homes sold last week. And make sure you tune into next week's episode to see if this number updated as more sales transactions that closed last week are updated into MLS. And even if this number is accurate and no more sales information needs to be entered, this is still a huge leap from what we saw earlier in spring. When the economy shut down, we saw home sales drop to as low as 85 units that sold in a single week. And now we're seeing about three times that sales volume. And remember, I mentioned that home sellers are coming out of the woodwork with 917 new condo listings that hit the market last week. And with that many new condo listings, 
listings, condo prices are likely to see some fluctuations since buyers will have more options. Condo prices averaged last week at $687,000. We're not seeing a lot of fluctuations over the past few weeks, making prices fairly balanced. And if prices continue to float around this rate throughout summer, we might not see condo prices go up much more throughout the year, especially if government subsidies and mortgage deferrals are coming up to an end for several homeowners in the fall. And what could be driving condo prices to hold steady is not only the increase in condo inventory to levels we haven't seen in a long time, but also the rising number of sales over the past 10 weeks. Condo sales have been going up by an average of 8% per week. And if sales continue to increase with more condo inventory outpacing the rate of sales, we could see a decline in condo prices throughout the year. But do you think that condo prices will hold steady? Or do you think that they'll go up with the rise in buyer demand? Let me know down in the comments below what you think. Someone reached out to me in last week's episode to point out some numbers that will likely impact the Canadian real estate market. I read the article and if you would like to read it too, I put the link in the description below. It basically talks about the future outlook of the Canadian housing market and why it's in trouble. And one of the biggest takeaways I got from the article was the unemployment number of 42.1% for 20 to 24 year old students returning to school, which means that almost one in every two students is not working right now while possibly accumulating student loan debt. And in 2019, the student unemployment rate was 10.8%, which means that that number has quadrupled in just one year. And while it's likely that not a lot of people in this age bracket are going to be buying houses, they will be later on. And if home prices continue to rise and that part of the population becomes a major group of home buyers, prices could be expected to fall. But this is all in due time and we can never fully measure what the future impact will be of what's happening today. Now here's a quick update of what's happening in the Toronto real estate market. We're seeing increasing levels of home sales every week, which right now is causing home prices to go up as well. And now since new home listings are higher than any time we've seen all year, the boost in home inventory should hopefully level out home prices before they start climbing too fast. And we're seeing a lot of similar trends in the condo market with the number of condo sales also rising. And condo prices have been more or less balanced out for the past three weeks, which could be an impact from the increase in condo inventory that we've been seeing now that buyers have more options to select from. But with mortgage deferrals and CERB programs coming to an end later this fall, there really is no way to tell how the market's going to shake out during that time. And although there are many reports that indicate that the Canadian housing market will take several years before it returns back to normal, I still don't see that being the case with Toronto, especially as more businesses start opening up again and the economy begins to recover. It just doesn't seem likely to me that the demand we're seeing today is going to be lower in the future. And to always stay updated on what's happening in the Toronto real estate market, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you never miss an update. As always, thank you for tuning in and taking the time to watch my videos. I try my best to deliver valuable content to you every single week. So check back often and I'll see you guys next time.